And it's like, can you explain to us exactly what Braddock is like? One of the most historical places in America, which is where Andrew Carnegie started his steel mill, the Edgar Thompson plant, and it still works today. And the way that that town is shaped is very much around that 19th century landscape that he developed. So this is already a tyrannical man enforcing all these types of living situations for people who worked in the mills. And um, at the same time, there was no regulation on the toxicity. So you take all that back history, a majority of African Americans that were redlined, which means you know, we weren't allowed to get homes in the better suburbs where white people lived like after the 40s and 50s. And one would have to understand that that town already has a very dark history that is fraught with so much racism and tension. And Braddock doesn't have any stores, no restaurants, nothing. No ATM machine, no grocery store, there's nothing there. I mean, this is how, how harsh it was. And I grew up like that. Otherwise, I was born in 1982, I didn't know. I just was upset and I was sick and I was always upset that we only lived right there and we can never move up the hill because Braddock starts to go on an incline. So this already tells you something about power and social landscape. The further you get up that hill, the far, farther you are from the toxicity. I mean, you know, we had the worst homes and why we were stuck on that one block. But, you know, I just think it's hard to remember it when you get older and you start learning about seeing the bigger picture. Because that's the problem with disenfranchised communities is they don't have the information to break down the systematic thing, which is the macro level, right? They only see the micro level of things. And that's how I was as a kid. But I also was very quiet. I was very upset, violent. Um, didn't really trust people. Wanted to just study. And uh, yeah, I, I had emotional problems younger because I, I didn't have the knowledge and the information to articulate what was happening to us in that community. And it got erased. Today, you think nothing like that happened. You look online, you think Braddock is just white people. And it never was, and it still isn't. But yet, that's the image we see. The experience as a young person facing problems in, in your country. And the high school I went to was a very good high school. Uh, first out of the dark history of segregation. The year I was born, after everything was abandoned in our town, they decided to send all of us to Woodland Hill School District, which is a few suburbs over in very wealthy schools, Quad A school. And so I ended up going there, and I had always going through my classes, the only black student, um, only black student in the gifted program. They had the gifted program if your grades were of a certain level. So, you know, I'm at a young age, even though I'm coming out of a very dark bottom of the neighborhood, I was able to go to like musicals and plays because I was smart enough to be with the gifted students, right? Be on the mock trial team, pretending to be a lawyer. Like I did all I did all that kind of stuff. I had really great art teachers and we ended up having our own art section within the high school and I would just cut classes if I felt like it and go and do art. Like it just everything I did went back to me making art. And I, you know, was receiving awards even in high school, and so it was something that I knew I was going to do. Um, I didn't know what it was going to look like in the end, or what the purpose was for. But yeah, that duality of the drugs, the violence, all of that playing out in the house versus what I was seeing on a Cosby show. You know, eating my little Debbie snack, <laughs> put my cup of milk, and then have to go to school and compete with these other kids that didn't understand my disposition. I think a uh, combination of all of that. <laughs>
and she never said much. Like her and Kathy both didn't tell me too much about themselves. They were just there and they were very strict and firm about how they were shaping me. Um, but yeah, when you see like people, the, the, the impact of how economics really impacts people's lives and destroys their families and destroys them as individuals, when you see environmental racism, like destroying your own body and everyone else around you is dying and you can't help them, the only way to, to deal with that is to endure it and become stronger about these things and speak to them. Like, it's not a gift that I particularly love to have, but that's what was given to me, is that I saw it and I survived and I was able to get an education and now come back and educate people about it. And I think that's usually where your weakness is, is probably what could be turned into a strength. Or what you perceive as weak is actually not your weakness. Your weakness is probably the most obvious ones. And I think that enemies always try to attack what your strength is. But what I could do is own my history. And when you own your history, that grounds you. And no matter what anyone says, or what they put out in the media, or however they plan to attack you, you're holding firm to your history, and they can't take that. I'm 17, I'm a senior in high school, I'm about to graduate next week. I'm a photorealistic artist, I work with paints, watercolors, um, graphite. My name is Clarence, I'm a junior. Um, I write creative stories and I paint. Um, my name is Nicole. I'm 18, junior, going to college this year. Um, I'm an artist and I like to make clothes. My name is Brianna. I'm 17 and a senior as well. And I'm writing. My name is Eduardo. I'm a senior and I'm 17 as well. Um, I, I work with pencils. I'll draw anything. Comics or pictures or things like that. That's what I do. I'm Hadiza. I'm 17. I'm a junior and I'm a writer. My name is Gertrudis. I'm 16 and I do manga art and I like friends. <laughs> My name is Tushaya. I'm 16. I go to Dawes Academy and I enjoy writing and programs. Um, my name is Ado. I'm 19. I'm I draw. He does more than draw. Yeah, he does more than draw. He's pretty good. I just yeah. now we're trying to so much. He's trying to be yeah. so much. <laughs> um, my name is Amanda. I'm 17. Um, I rate. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, my name is Kalisha. I'm the youngest. I'm 15. I'm a sophomore, and I'm a poet.